What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 new main event mega stars WWE are secretly building. Now, we're in this renaissance period, I guess you can say, where WWE doesn't have to rely on stars from the past to, you know, I guess you can say, elevate the roster or get people to watch the product before we've seen so many times of stars from the past take up certain spots whether it's wrestlemania matches or main events and stuff like that in place of getting people to watch the product and we don't have to do that if you guys realize as of late from the nxt stars coming to the main roster and just the stars that they've built over time on the main roster itself we're starting to see an influx of new talent or new faces that potentially can be household names and they're building them up so you have less reliance of stars from the past and now you're building up your current roster and people are paying top dollar just to see the current roster that's awesome to see that's how it should be so we're going to check out to see um who they feel like is going to be future main eventers and see if we agree appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man we figured it out for years one of their biggest issues was the lack of new stars there we go. look doesn't matter if they hit or not if you do watch every single week it didn't even feel like there was any effort Darn it, we need that spark. These days, however, it is the total opposite. And when you dive deep into this crazy roster, you can find 10 gems ready to go. So I am Simon Miller, and I'm going to hurl those names at you right now. Number 10, Austin Theory. So this is a controversial choice. Yeah. Which seems somewhat mad. I think it comes down to the fact that the old WWE regime tried quite hard with Austin Theory, and it didn't work. At the same time, his story at one point was chasing a giant egg. I don't think you can do much with that. Ever since Triple H took over, Theory has mostly been with Grace and Waller. And yeah, they're great together, or at least I'm a fan. They entertain me, and I do believe that's the point. As I am speaking to you, the breakup tease is go. And when we do pull the trigger, Austin is going to be the baby face, which means now is the time. What we don't need, though, is any more too cool for school. Go back to NXT and use some of those attributes where Theory was quite likable because he had more of a goofy side. Doesn't mean he can't kick ass in the ring, but if that is him, let him go with it. It's not that the man doesn't tick all the WWE boxes either. We just need the right narrative and bam, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that this guy flies. Hopefully that is the case. Hopefully that is the case. I do think he needs to be separated from Grayson Waller. It's it's me personally, I haven't really too much care for their their, you know, their tag team uh alliance but he needs to be away from grace and waller and i i would like to see them at least try to you know have him as a baby face obviously grace and waller is really like easy to hate as a heel and hopefully they can build off of that do i think he has potential for sure they just have to find the right story and book him correctly and i think possibly with time and correct booking we may have something here so he he could possibly be that person right now I'm, a lot of people aren't seeing it but we'll see he has a lot of upside to his potential number nine ludwig kaiser i mean you could go with ludwig tomorrow bowser would be very very proud some people insinuate he needs to remove himself from the clutches of gunter but i don't agree I think they complement each other. And if Kaiser had an intercontinental title run in 2024, I'd be totally cool with that. In fact, that's what should happen. Ludwig just knows how to be an asshole heel and his in-ring work is just that devastating. That could work too. He will kick your butt and smile about it and then probably go for tea. The man also knows how to get that wonderful heat and you can just tell that management understands this. We know, they know, he knows, his nan knows. Doesn't always mean proper success, but it would be a massive surprise if it didn't work out, let me tell you. Kaiser was just born for this sort of character and that is half the battle. You will be a world champion down the line. Mark my words. Number eight. Would you put him against Gunther? Because I feel like the, if you're going to really boost this guy, which I think they've done a great job of actually making him feel like a very dangerous threat. At one point, he was just Gunther's lackey, getting beaten up, jobbed out, 
no one to take seriously. Then they turned them into someone to take seriously. If you do that, if you, I feel like for him to get that mega main event push, he would have to go obviously against Gunther. I think that would be a, an amazing story to tell. The protege trying to step from underneath the shadows of, you know, someone that's, you know, been over him for so long. So they could do something there. It, but it, I think the route would have to be he has to go through Gunther. Whether he wins or loses, you can decide yourself. But to really get him to that main event upper echelon, he would have to go against Gunther. Tiffany Stratton. So really, when you document where Tiffany Stratton was and where she is right now, WWE kind of fast-tracking her. Oh, definitely. I mean, it was only a few years ago where she was learning what wrestling was. Since then, she smashed through NXT and been a huge success on the main roster, and not just because she won the Money in the Bank briefcase. Tiffany also gets reactions wherever yeah, she goes. she does. And that is the real currency of WWE. If the fans care, you're halfway there. And that's what Bon Jovi was singing about. Shredden also has the look the company likes and she can talk to boot. It's only a matter of time before she takes a further step up the ladder. The only real thing that can stop Tiffany is Tiffany. I don't see why that would happen though. So yeah, I would watch this space. I mean, one day she could even be a WrestleMania main eventer. Nobody else the future main event stars that are right in front of our face right now make sure you let me know in the comments below before you like the video share the video and subscribe yeah <laughs> tiffany's next for sure i mean i do see her potentially cashing in and i hope she hopefully she does to kind of freshen up the women's division on smackdown hope she cashes in on naya they can tell a good story there and she's been giving reactions since she got to the main roster yeah she's the next one up for sure in the women's division She's the next one up, without a doubt. Number seven, Ilya Dragunov. The best thing about Ilya Dragunov is that you know what you're gonna get every single time. Uh -huh. He only knows one mode, which is absolutely everything, and he is incredible to watch. The man just goes and goes and goes. It's oddly why Ilya can lose so much, because even in defeat, he has given you all he has. Yeah. Fans notice that stuff, and it does go a long way. And it also means when he gets big wins, it feels twice as special. I'm also not sure there's a more intense competitor today, He's and that's great intense, to drawing bro. new viewers in too. If you are flicking channels and you see Dragonov, you may stop. Again, the dude is crazy. If we were still in Vince McMahon's WWE, I would be less confident, but it feels like For Triple sure. H has already identified how best to use Elia, and in time, he will find his way. Dragonov is also the best babyface due to the above, and what a lesson to teach your kids. Never give up. Kind of feels like somebody else said that, but who the flub knows? Yeah, unfortunately, he got uh, recently injured, so he's going to be sidelined for some time. But uh, the thing is, with Ilya, if they put him, whenever he does come back, in some high-profile matches and actually have him get more on television wins, they have something there. They have something there. They have they obviously gonna have that feud with him and Braun Breaker. They're gonna have that feud with him and um Gunther. They have something there. They just have to be able to essentially give him those television wins to get more people behind him. Cause I think the the wrestling, the online wrestling community, yes, they are behind Ilya. It's just getting more of the casual fans to go to these shows to be more behind him as well. Cause the guy <clears throat> He's going to give you everything he has in whatever match he puts out there. And you know you're going to be entertained. He's he's like one of those guys. Is, he's going to give you everything. Everything to make that match as best as possible. So definitely can see that. Number six, Carmelo Hayes. So what did Carmelo Hayes do after he got called up to the main roster? He had some match of the year candidates with Andrade. He had some fire of matches. Of course he did. It was a slow build, I suppose, but more and more Hayes was allowed to show his personality, and he backed it up with some amazing fights versus Mr. Tranquilo. I'm not sure WWE would let random people have a best of seven series without actually announcing it's a best of seven series. I mean, this could become a forever feud. If NXT is anything to go by, we're only scratching the surface too because Carmelo carried himself with that confidence that will serve him well. I think he believes he should be a top guy, which is fair. And if he does get given the ball, at the very least, he will run with it. That man is going to have no regrets. It's a great person to have on your main roster either way. Hayes can fit into many, many different scenarios. And look, let's break it right down. 
we are only just kicking off. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, man, I can see him getting the United States Championship at some point. Hell, I can see him being a, a future Money in the Bank winner. Right. His upside is really good. Put the fries in the bag, man. <laughs> Put the fries in the bag, man. It's, that's a funny line. He, he's got some momentum. He's had some great matches. Yeah. He, he's a good heel, good cocky heel, telling people put the fries in the bag. I'm here for it. I can definitely see him being a, a, a future champion, uh, mid-card champion for sure. And if they keep pushing him, possibly, possibly a world champion is just going to take the right feud. I know some people are like, oh, he's too small. No, I don't think he is. I think we live in a time period where if you put someone in the right feud, the right story, You'll be surprised how people get invested. Now, this is going to be an interesting one, Jade. Five, Jade Cargill. People love to rip on Jade Cargill, but I swear, you cannot understand wrestling. Sometimes it is exactly how you look. Imagine you're a kid and you see her. It's like a superhero who is real. So who cares if she can do a hurricane rana? Not me. It's also an unfair assessment as Jade is good at what you want her to be good at. She can power opponents around and look like a monster, which again is all you need. Just use that aura to dominate, and the rest can kind of sort itself out. The point is, you don't have to be a complete in-ring worker if you have other attributes. That comes down to management, and I'm sure they get it. Push the strengths and hide the weaknesses. We've already mentioned Tiffany Stratton on this list, and done yeah. right there is mega money and these two having a feud. It would be like WWE's Marvel battle. You treat this right, and I tell you once more, the other stuff won't matter at all. Number four. Yeah, it's without a doubt. Without a doubt, whether people agree with it or not, she looks like a star. She looks like a top WWE star. And they're clearly setting it up. The question will become how things will play out with this Bianca and Jade feud because I think obviously that's a that's a WrestleMania main event it's or at least one of them if they build it right they do it right she could be a huge star she could they just gotta continue to build it right is her in-ring work the best no it's not but at the same time how many other champions or stars that we've seen in WWE that in-ring work wasn't the best but their or made up for everything else. And I'm not saying that that's the case here. I'm pretty sure, you know, at some point she will, you know, improve her skills as well over time. But at the same time, I also understand that being just this technician in the ring is cool, but you still have to have some type of charisma. You still have to have that aura of I am a top person. If you don't have that, your in-ring work has to be top notch for you to get some type of pass, you know. So clearly, she's gonna be one of those late uh, those women that WWE is gonna push to the moon. You know, the question is, will the story and the matches, you know, link up and match up with? what WWE's pushing? But she's definitely gonna be one of the top stars, without a doubt, whether people like it or not. Joe Hendry. I mean, the numbers don't lie. Joe Hendry is going to be a TNA talent for a while, but as soon as his contract is up, he'll be back in NXT. The WWE machine will get behind him again. The Raw Rumble pop will be crazy too. Yep. That's likely going to happen in 2025. We yep. also know Shawn Michaels is high on Joe, so at the very least, he's going to get an opportunity on the main roster. And look, if Hendry continues to destroy social media, he is a made man. Yeah. We've talked about this time and time again. There's more to wrestling than wrestling. Yeah. Who grief does WWE like online stuff? Even then, Joe knows what he's doing in a ring and has the experience to navigate his way through most scenarios. The man grafted and it's going to pay off. And it will be lovely to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's whenever he does debut at the Royal Rumble or comes to the Royal Rumble, that crowd's going to be crazy. Once they once they hear his theme music, it's over. It's raps. So, yeah. I'm, he's, he's definitely going to be another acquisition WWE is looking forward to getting. And with his, you know, his marketing skills on social media he is what Zack Ryder was except Vince was in charge if Triple H was in charge around that time or in this time period right if Zack Ryder just came into this time period and Triple H was in charge 
it would be the same thing. It's just Vince didn't know how to really utilize someone that got over on their own. The same thing here. Same thing here. So, yeah, definitely he can be a, 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 a integral piece for WWE in the future. He definitely going to be one of the top guys. I can see that happening. Number three, Bronson Reed. Talk about taking your time. When Bronson Reed was first brought back to the WWE, it was a little bit weird. He was featured, sure, but he was sort of just there. Wasn't a real conversation we could get into. Then from nowhere, I suppose, somebody had to take out Seth Rollins for a while. Uh -huh. We chose Reed. And boy, how did he take advantage of that? Yeah. He reminded everybody why he is one of the very best big men out there. His war with Braun Strowman in 2024 cemented that. And he should be featured at the top of the card for the rest of his raw days. From this point onwards, yeah. this guy is good to go. If you want to tie it into the past, you could call him a new version of Bam Bam Bigelow. And I mean that as a massive compliment. I I think Bronson is that good. We also need to cycle in guys all the time when it comes to the main event, so we should give Reed his moment. And I promise you this, my friends, he will totally smash it. Number two. Hey, Bronson Reed, what they've been doing with him, they have finally made him a credible, dangerous threat. And I love it. I love what they've done with Bronson Reed. Now he's going to have a match with Seth Rollins coming soon. And I'm I'm excited to see that because now we have something here. Now you've created another star that people, he's over in the sense of he's beating the crap out of people. He's over. People love that. You take him seriously now. You take him as a threat. They got his move over. They got his finisher over. The tsunami, they got it over. Even more than, you know, it was always a devastating move, but they got it over. Now he's going to have a feud with Seth Rollins. Hopefully this pans out and we can start seeing him being at the top of the card. I think the guy deserves to be um, the Intercontinental Champion at some point. I think he deserves that. Hell, if you want to put him in some world championship type, type of scene, you can do that now. And people won't be like, why is Brunson Reed there? No, they'll buy into it. So I love this. I'm happy for Bronson Reed. We'll see how things play out with Seth Rollins because I, I think they, they can do some, some great magic there. Jacob Fatu. I mean, it is obvious, right? What are we talking about? WWE has already decided. It's why Jacob Fatu didn't go to NXT because the higher-ups knew he was ready. Yep. And man, ever since, that dude has been on fire. He became yep. the most impressive member of the new Bloodline straight after his debut. And look how he is booked. Jacob is even told he can no sell for Randy Orton. Yeah. That doesn't just happen. It's basically gold dust. He backs it up all the time, too. And when we get to the eventual far too Roman Reigns match, Ooh. you'll see. He's not going to falter. He will take that opportunity and smash through a window. I would put money on the fact one day he'll be a world champion as well. Yeah. And again, I'm going to use that phrase. We are only just getting started because Jacob Fatu. It's going to be massive. And they let him talk, too. They 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 let him actually talk recently, a couple weeks ago, and he sounded good on the microphone talking talking up uh, solo. Oh, the fact that we are talking about Roman Reigns versus Jacob Fatu this soon, that lets you know, oh, he's going to be slated as the top guy very, very soon. When it's all said and done, I can easily see him being the wwe champion bro the guy's over as hell guys over as hell one dominic mysterio you just don't take steps like these forward by magic and pretty much every single year dominic mysterio evolves as a performer I mean, the man just gets better and better. It goes to show the Mysterio name has power, and while Dom Dom will take a very different path from his father, the destination is the same. He's going to be a huge star and likely a world champion the moment That's will arrive. Crazy. Dommy Boy even turned heel when he was already a heel, so he's yeah. rewriting the rule book, and the act doesn't get old. It will eventually because that's life, but I tell you, I bet he's already shifted gears before then. Mysterio just gets it. He will become a huge babyface sooner or later too because that is also how wrestling works. Look who he's been hanging out with. Finn Balor, Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest. Does he ever just fade into the background? No, because he finds a way to stand out. So it is just the beginning for the condom, whether you do like it or not, because he is going to become the man. 
and he'll likely retire his dad too. Yeah, we are not ready. Oh yeah, he's definitely. Uh, if if I'm WWE, I have a match at some point where he retires his dad. If there's anybody that retires retires Ray Mysterio, it has to be Dominic. And he's still one of the top heels in the company. I personally probably would have put him maybe at like a number three in this list. And I definitely would have interchanged between Jacob and Braun Breaker. I was expecting to see Braun Breaker on this list. Even though they're secretly not building them. I mean, we all know that Braun Breaker is you know, someone that they're actively pushing. So I guess he probably wouldn't fit the criteria of this list of secretly being built. But at the same time, I mean, I probably would have put him on here most likely, but I get it. He's not secretly being built. It's obvious. I mean, hell, it's kind of obvious they're doing the same thing with a few people on this list, especially Jacob. It's obvious that they're pushing him. So, I mean, it's, obvious that they're pushing tiffany stratton it's obviously that they're putting pushing jade so even though there's a few people it's obviously that they're pushing to be mega stars i definitely probably would have should have put Braun breaker on here but either way this was a, a a solid little list uh comment down below let me know is there anybody else you feel like deserved to be on this list as wwe um uh, potentially pushing as a main event mega star let me know down below but i appreciate all love sport row two 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you on the next one peace